I would really like to start first with, you know, when we first sat down, we were just talking and mm-hmm. you brought up a quote that you told your students today. I kind of want to start with you yeah. just talking about that. I wish I could attribute this quote <laughs> to somebody, but I think I just read it somewhere probably just in the last several months that it just said, you know, leave room for the unimaginable. Mm -hmm. And it really resonates for me this year because, you know, the last five years have been kind of a whirlwind for me and my family moving back here to Butler, starting at BC3 in a different position in the foundation. And then, you know, two and a half years later, um, now serving as interim president. And if you would have said that to me five years ago, (laughs) I think I... I don't know if I would have believed you, you know, but it's it's pretty remarkable how how things happen. You follow these little little breadcrumbs mm-hmm. and to lead you where you're supposed to be and and that's what's happened and I feel very um, fortunate and honored really. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. For a long time I suffered with depression and anxiety. I had tried therapy before but struggled finding a therapist I connected with until I found BetterHelp. That's why I am so excited to share BetterHelp's mission to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. Because finding a therapist can be hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online. Remote therapy sessions, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. Click the link in description and receive 10% off your first month of BetterHelp. And by clicking that link, you support this channel. Plus, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, or anything like that. I was struggling for a long time, and BetterHelp was where I found my therapist, Whitney, who I still see weekly for almost two years now. So. If you're struggling, like I was, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in description or go to betterhelp.com forward slash alter eagle. That's betterhelp.com forward slash alter eagle. There's no better time than now to start your mental health journey. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for supporting this channel. This episode is brought to you by R.W. McDonald & Sons Incorporated, Robert Stevens Jewelers. Thank you to our sponsors for your support on our first season of the Alter Eagle Podcast. It is Friday. Now, it's not Friday as you're listening to this. It's actually Monday as you're listening to this, but it's Friday as I am recording this. I typically wait until Friday before the episode drops to record my intro. And I always say to myself, it's going to be three minutes, four minutes max. And I'll sit here and I'll just start chomping away, saying whatever. And then I look at my soundboard and it's like eight minutes and 24 seconds. Well, here's the thing. In order for you to get to know me, I've got to talk to you. And that's what I'm trying to do. So my recent dilemma, and I need your help, car insurance. Can we talk about car insurance? First of all. I was in a car accident. Someone hit me, totaled my car, July 31st, okay? So I have to get a new car. I wasn't ready to get a new car. I had to wait until, like, all the insurance stuff went through and all these things. Then I start looking at cars. And I want to get a newer car. And I want to get a brand new car because the depreciation is so quick. But I want to get a new car. I was waiting to get a car. I needed one more year where I was really going to be in a place to do that. Well, here we are. So I kept looking. I looked at different cars. There were things I liked about this, things I liked about that, things I didn't like about this. I had a couple things. I was like, these are my top three things, okay? two. These two are the most important. These are like non-negotiables. Well, Tawny Sailor, the Mike Kelly Hyundai dealership, hooked me up. Girl made it happen. Also, There's a guy that works there whose name is Mike Kelly, and he's not related to Mike Kelly. Anyways, fun fact I thought you should know. He found this car as well. So they worked together. They tag team, but she did a lot of legwork for me. Let me tell you, that girl showed me so many cars. I got to send her major props because if I would have been her, I'd have been like, homegirl, what do you want? I am taking my time to decide. It's a big decision. And as I've grown older, I've recognized that I'm going to just slow and steady wins the race. Take my time. 
Well, I wasn't able to pause my previous car insurance. They didn't seem to understand why I wanted to pause it. I'm like, because I don't have a car right now. I didn't even have a rental car. I was driving my mom's car. And I was covered under her insurance on her car. So we checked that out. The reason I didn't have a rental car is because I didn't have it on my insurance. And the other guy, well, I don't really want to get into that. So as I'm looking for car insurance, (laughs) I call to get a quote from different places. One of the places, I understand that they have to ask you certain questions, right, that are in, that need to be in the, the form. Well, she calls me back 15 minutes later and she said, how do you spell your last name again? She had my last name spelled wrong. That's fine. Common mistake, whatever. I, I tell her the spelling again. She corrects it. Then she proceeds to say, what's your status? And it wasn't what she said. It was how she said it. And I said, what, what do you mean what's my status? She's like, well, so you're divorced, right? Or you're, you're separated. And I said, no, you're not. And I said, no, I'm single. So you've never been married. No. Oh. What is that? No, I've never been married. Do you want the Cliff Notes version or do you have time for me to explain to you why I'm not married? Why I am without children? Do you want me to explain to you? Because um, I'm not sure how much time you have, but I have some work to do today. But I probably have 30 minutes, but that's not enough time. The point of me bringing this up is because of today's guest. The first time I ever met Megan, she was friendly. She has always been friendly, warm, welcoming. She's the interim president at Butler County Community College. She's she's the boss lady, okay? She's up there. People know her. She is an important person, all right? She's a mom. She's a wife. She's a sister. She's a daughter. She's a friend. She is always, always, always kind. It doesn't matter what is coming out of her mouth. It is kind. And I have to often remind myself of this, right? Not what you say, how you say it. But it was so interesting to me because it wasn't that this woman, it was like she, I don't know if she couldn't believe, like, I can't believe you're this age and you're still single. And I was like, (laughs) I don't know. I took it the way that I took it, right? That doesn't mean that's the way that it was meant to be. But the tone was so judgmental. And I'll be honest with you, I was a little saucy over it. I didn't appreciate it. Not going to lie. Just something to know about me. So in that moment, I thought, okay, maybe this is not how she means it to be. It's how it's coming across to me. I'm just going to continue to answer the questions. Then I proceeded to get question as to, well, why don't you have car insurance right now? And I said, well, I don't have a car. So you haven't had a car since your accident? And I said, no, ma'am. Does this pertain to me getting a quote? Well, no, I just, oh, you just wanted to know. It's in situations like that where that's when I start to feel a little saucy. I'm a Gemini, okay? I don't know if you believe in astrological stuff. Some of it is like, yeah, and some of it's like, eh. Some of it, yeah. Some of it, it's not totally, like, don't take it as fact, right? But I started to feel a little bit like she was she was about to, like, it's like a light switch. She was about to, whoop. And I'm like, why, why am I feeling like I'm being judged right now? I wasn't driving around without car insurance. I had it. But I wasn't going to continue to pay, and they wouldn't let me pause the insurance. That, to me, is a problem. Why would I pay $170 a month when I don't have a car? And they wouldn't pause it. So I finally just explained myself to her. And I'm like, and this is why I explained myself. How far back do we want to go? Childhood? Sure, let's go. I'm recognizing it. I'm working on it. Just things to know about me. So if you know me, and maybe it annoys you, and that's fine. I'm working on it. But also, you know what? I don't have to be perfect for everybody. I just got to be good enough for me. And then all the other people that want to be in my life will just be there. But it's just a, a, a something to recognize just in life, right? Sometimes we take things so intentional and it's like it's not even intended to be towards us. So maybe the way that we respond is just we just choose to say, I'm 
not sure, actually. Or, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question for you. Or, I'm sorry you're having a bad day. I'm in a little bit of a hurry, but if you need to reach out to me later, I'm so sorry I have to go. You know, I I find myself, there are times where I'm in a rush or something. I'm like, "Ah, I can't talk right now. I got to go. You know, Uh, I try to recognize it and be very mindful of it. I brought it up because the guest today is just one of the nicest people I've ever met. I feel really grateful to have had her in here to share, you know, how she got to where she is and, um, as a mom and finding the things in life, you know, that can be challenging at times, but also finding the, the positive to them. You got to find the positive and, and the gratitude. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful for all the people I've had the opportunity to sit down with here. And there it is. I looked at the soundboard. It's eight minutes in. Well, there she goes, folks. Okay. So we're going to get into this episode. Megan Koval, interim president at Butler County Community College. I mean, you spent 13 years in D.C., you said, Mm -hmm. with your family. Mm -hmm. You have a master's of education degree from the Pennsylvania State University. You also did work there for a period of time, right? Yes. I, I, um, I was also just talking about this today with some of our students. My first job was in admissions for Penn State. So I was just saying to them what a, what an excellent first job it was for me because I did all out of state recruitment. So I had to get on a plane by myself and Mm -hmm. travel all across the country and present and learn how to public speak and learn how to talk to all these different people. So it was such a great, great first job. I feel like Mm -hmm. if everybody could have a first job in college admissions, no matter what they do, they would be set. But yeah, that's a huge, that's a huge uh, opportunity to also I don't know, get to know yourself as well. Like you said, you, you traveled on your own Mm -hmm. and a bachelor of arts degree in political science, communications, arts minor from Allegheny college. Okay. So when I read all of that, (laughs) I told Megan this, when we sat down, it makes me want to go back to school. I'm a huge believer in we're always learning. Yeah. So, you know, stepping into this role, May 16th, right? You became interim president. Yes. Was it May 16th? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and something that was quoted by, how do you say, doctor, is it new, new, new pair? New power. New yep. power. New power. Okay. New power. Mm-hmm. Uh, quote from Dr. New power that was put into the article that you had sent me that was in the Butler Eagle was for a seasoned expert in relationship management, higher education, prowess, and government relations to mm-hmm. succeed. Um, so it's funny. I write stuff down, and it, as I'm writing it down, it I don't know if that made sense when I said it. The same thing happened to me at the Geyser Center Fashion Show on Saturday as I was reading Joe's quotes that he sent me. Oh. I thought I lost the second card, and I don't think I did. I think it was just that one card. I did, I did not notice at all. That's the thing, most of the time. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. Um, yeah. What I really liked about this portion of that that's in the article, which I'm going to include the link in this episode mm-hmm. in the caption to that article so people can read yeah. that article that came out. Um, and that came out March 20th of this year prowess there's something about like higher education prowess I don't know I I just really love that word you have you know you spoke to spoke to continuing to have a seat at the table by staying engaged in state and government conversations so those two things kind of together like really stood out to me and I I don't know it's I'm very impressed with all of your accolades all the things that you've done um, you know and since you're hiring at BC3 you were hired into the education foundation position, correct? That's right. Mm-hmm. And there was a nationwide search for that position. Is that what brought you? No, because you moved back. How long ago? You said you've moved back. We moved back three years ago. So I. Okay. I did. It was one of those things where everything just kind of worked out. Um, my husband and I, so we met in D.C. We had our girls there, I have two girls that are five and Eight very soon, almost like eight. Many use too, by the way. <laughs> when I met them, I was yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, they're so cute!" And I was like, "They're like mini Megans." Yeah, it's fun to yeah. be able to start to bring them to things. But yeah. um, yeah, my husband actually is from Scranton, so he's from Pennsylvania, okay. but the other side, other side of the state. And we were living in Rockville, Maryland, and had just talked about, you know, maybe we'll go, you know, back to Pennsylvania to raise the girls but it was kind of one of those things where you start to think about it and you're like well but how do we actually do that that, like 
is one person going to get a job? Are we going to wait till we both get a job? Mm -hmm. Do we go with one job and the other person? And then that was right around the time of the pandemic. And my husband's work went fully remote. And this position at the college came open. And we were like, maybe this is it. That's you know? amazing. And, the, and I applied for it, went through the process, you know, not knowing whether it would work out or not. Um, and we would have come anyways. Um, but it was wonderful. Yeah. Just wonderful how it all just worked out. Everything just fell into place. Yeah. And it was really, you know, coming home. I mean, my, my family's still here. And um, I always enjoyed coming back to Butler. It, it always was still home for me. I would come back frequently, friends that are still here. So mm -hmm. for me, it was a real a real treat to come home. I was excited to do it. You yeah. Know? I agree with you because we, we did talk a little bit about that and how living away from Butler, it's almost like you have a different appreciation for it. Yeah. And I felt that way too. I had a lot of people ask me like, why'd you move back? Why'd you move back? Yeah. And, and to me, that's a little sad when you hear that from someone who's lived here the whole life. And it's like, find the appreciation in the things that you yeah. have. Yeah. And I also say if if you've ever wanted to go somewhere, I told a young woman this the other day, she was saying that her and her boyfriend have always thought about living in New York. And I said, well, Butler's not going anywhere. Yeah. And you're young. Yeah. You don't have kids. Yeah. You're young. If you both want to go, why not? Yeah. Like go together, yeah. you know, f find jobs, go together, experience it. You can always come back. Yep. There's yeah. nothing wrong in that. And I yeah. think that's one of the things that, um, holds a lot of people back, right? It's yeah. that fear of the unknown. And I think what happened with you, it's almost like a power of suggestion, right? You both started sort of having these yeah. conversations yeah. about wanting to do this and be close to family. And I love how it all just like worked out for you. Yeah. And um, it was hard. I mean, it wasn't that it, it was hard too, because yeah. we, I mean, we felt like we were ready for this change, but we really did like our lives in DC too, really yeah. good friends, good neighbors. And mm -hmm. so it's really a kind of a, just a weird space to be in where you, I felt really sad for a while too, to leave, but also while being really excited. But the nice part is now as we have good friends in yep. DC and a couple of people that my oldest daughter even remembers. And so we have, have those connections and it was just a really like looking back, it was a really great chapter and we left kind of on a high note there. And so I feel happy about that. I love that. Well, it does take time. There's yeah. always that initial, when you first have the initial shift, the change, Yeah. there's a little bit of nervousness, right? For the yeah. unknown. And yeah. when you know what it's like to start over again. Yeah. And you're like, there's going to be some growing pains, yeah. I should say. Yeah. But then there's an excitement to, it's something new, even though it's a place you're coming back to where you yeah. had been, it's still different. Yeah. And my, and because my husband was from Scranton, I mean, he obviously knows my family and has met my friends from Butler and they mm -hmm. knew him well, but it was also very new for him too. And I always tell people, I feel like this is so funny. Um, one of the first observations he had is he kept saying when we would go out to eat, he's like, why is everybody asking me if I want ranch? With everything oh my gosh like, yes like not just his salad but he'd order like a sandwich and yep. they'd say do you want ranch with that and he's like well, fries I think I do but he's like why am I why is everyone <laughs> I was like oh welcome welcome to western PA welcome to western where Pennsylvania. ranch is king and Heinz ketchup <laughs> is a god yeah, yes yeah I it's funny someone did that once we went out to eat and uh, in college a boyfriend and he, his salad came snack and pack and he's like <laughs> why are there fries on my salad and I was like what yeah, and then right. I remembered. I was like, "Oh yeah. wait, you're like, you're from Georgia. Yeah. You're not used yeah, you're to not used fries to on your salad." I, said, I was like, "Just, just trust the process. Yeah. Just go ahead yeah. and have your salad with your French fries." Yeah. So welcome home. <laughs> welcome home. Yes. Yeah. You know, a few things we had also discussed um, was, you know, being a mom. Yeah. And you had mentioned, you know, have two girls. So it's interesting when we talk about someone having it all together. We, we had a little bit of a conversation about mm -hmm. that. And we see things on social media and we, that's where we compare. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, when I first, when I first, and every time I've met you, every time I've spoken to you, you've always been so kind and so welcoming. 
And it was almost like, wait, we keep seeing each other. I feel like we need to say hello. And Jess was actually the one, Jessica Matnock was the one to introduce us officially. And, um, you know, talking about having it all together, but we know that's not true. So what advice, you know, I don't know, do you give yourself, but would you give another, you know, parent or mom or professional who, who might be struggling to find balance? Like, yeah, I think, so it's a really good question. And I, I, I will start by saying that I have not figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of us but have. I, so. I do feel like it's something I'm continually working on, but I, I, I feel like I've really started to kind of push back on the term balance because I think balance is a, is kind of a lofty goal, you know? And I think it also, it also kind of implies that we compartmentalize our lives into these separate areas, the work version of yourself, the family version of yourself, the friend version of yourself. And we talk a lot at at BC3 about how like people bring them their whole selves to work. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the idea that, you know, we want people to be well. And if you're not well at home for whatever reason, there's no way that's not going to impact your work. Mm -hmm. And if things are hard at work, there's no way that's not going to impact your home. Right. And so trying to, you know, create spaces and create environments where you're allowed to be your whole self so that you can actually, you know, thrive in the workplace. And, and I think I just try to remember that. And, and in doing that, I think it lends to hopefully people, including myself, you know, being able to give yourself more grace, you know? I was just going to say, she's going to say grace. Yeah. We talk a lot about grace. We, we have talked a lot about grace at BC3, especially during this transition mm-hmm. um, and just kind of, you know, acknowledging that everyone's got a lot of balls in the air and, um, you know, you, and you also just, I know this is such a, this is said a lot, but you really just don't know what's going on with people sometimes, you know? And Absolutely. So, um, yeah. And I mean, I think it's like, I'm thinking of probably two or three weeks ago, I had a meeting on Thursday where the person I met with said, I didn't even say a word. And they said, are you okay? I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, I am. Like, like I was thinking, I, I think they thought maybe the job or it was, you know, and then the next day I had a meeting with someone different who, again, I didn't say anything. And they said, are you okay? And I was like, oh my gosh. And I got to thinking like, I'm, I'm good and work is good, but you know what? My, my girls are not sleeping. Like we haven't been sleeping for the past three weeks. And so I was like, that's what they're seeing on my face. Wow. Right. I don't want them to see that, you know, but but we're people and we're whole people. And I was like, you know, I am good, but I'll tell you, like, it's a little, we're having a little rough moment at home right now. And yeah, you know, it feels good to have someone recognize that maybe you need to talk about something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you don't want to, there's also yeah. that, right? If you're like, yeah, there's some yeah. stuff going on, but I don't really yeah. want to get into it. It's ugh, wow. I can't believe you just said that. Cause I thought, yeah, it's, and these, I should say too, these were two people that I, that I know very well. And yes. I wasn't like in a meeting or presenting. It or wasn't whatever, some random. But I was like, yeah. Thank you for seeing that. But it's actually works great. Yeah. We're, <laughs> right now. I'm, yes. I'm struggling there, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. I, I had said last week, someone had asked me how I was doing and I said, I'm fine. And they said, you know, that means that you're not. Yeah. Yeah. And it was the first time someone actually heard what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Which was kind of crazy because it's not, I didn't say it to get like a, oh my gosh, what's going on? Yeah. What's, yeah. Um, but it was, it just made me feel better that it was okay to not be okay. There's that saying yeah. too, right? That it's yeah. okay to not be okay. Yeah. But to know that you have support, like if you need something, yeah. if you need someone to, you know, pick you up or help you along yeah. or do something that maybe you're just feeling a little overwhelmed with. I really like what you said though about balance because I feel like I use that a lot and it, mm-hmm. the minute you said it, it just clicked with me. I thought, yeah, sometimes sometimes I'm not going to be balanced. Yeah. And and it, I think I think I used to even think about it on a daily basis. Like am am I balanced on this day with work and with family, for example, or even with friends, people I love. Mm-hmm. But I think it's I try to think about it more in the aggregate cuz you have seasons Mm-hmm. We all do that are busier at work or busier at home. And kind of like when you, when you step back and maybe look at like a, a month's period of time or a couple months, you know, and kind of looking at it in a larger picture than being so hard on yourself to be like, spent this many hours at work today and this many hours at home. And, mm-hmm. um, 
Yeah, and I think, you know, BC3 is a great place to work. I mean, w- when I first came, you know, Family First is a is a real priority there, you know? And so, you know, if you've got something or a little show to watch for the girls or a practice you need to go to, I mean, you mark it down, you go. I mean, it's very encouraged, and that was super important to me, and, and, and making sure it stays that way is, too. That's important, yeah. and I, I want to say – that's how I am treated here. Yeah. And it's, again, like I we were talking before, my direct boss is Tammy Shuey, who's the general manager of the Butler Eagle. And so I've always found that if I have to take a day or if I need to shift my schedule, she said to me when I first got here, she said, listen, as long as you get your work done, yeah. as long as you're, you know, checking in on things you need to be checking in on, she's mm-hmm. like, you can work whenever you want to work. Yeah. You can yep. come in later if you have to. You can stay later. You can, I've worked, I've kind of gotten in the habit of working a little on Sundays because my episodes drop Monday. So I have this sort of OCD tendency of double checking or triple checking things. Yeah. I will go back into my house after I know I unplugged my flat iron. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. I will lock the door. I will be in my car and I'm like, nope. And I have to go back in and check again yeah. because it's just, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And so I'm sort of the same with my work where I'll, I'll wait and I'll check it, check it, check it, check it. And then I'm like, okay, I feel so much better if I have it uploaded, if I do it the evening before it drops Yeah. and then it's fresh because if I do it on Friday, Sunday evening, I'm going to be like, okay, did I forget something? Did I do yeah. something wrong? Did I yeah. make sure that there was the crossfades and there was the... And then I go all the way back to the program and check. And I'm like, yeah. why am I not just like making that what I do then? Yeah. yeah. Obstacles. What obstacles have you had to overcome, like on your educational journey while being a mom, a wife, and also taking care of yourself? So I don't know, it maybe kind of goes a little bit with the last question. Yeah. And this could also be, I think for me, like looking at your degrees, for instance, Mm -hmm. um, I have such high regard for anyone who has a master's degree in anything. I think, you know, going to undergrad to me, like undergrad was, it had its challenging moments. It had yeah. moments where I had certain courses where, that just clicked mm-hmm. for me. My favorite class in college, I was a theater major, but my favorite like class that I took was my ethics class. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because it just, I didn't realize how much it was going to click with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but outside of my theater, you know, the class I had to do for that, it really click, clicked with me. But yeah, it was tough. Yeah. You know, it was a really hard four. I did four and a half because I did a couple semesters where I had lighter loads because of all the extracurricular activities yeah. I did. So track, dance team, and theater, I did all of that all four years. So I had to really sort of mind myself with my schedule. And so I was like, I'm just going to do a fall semester and graduate in the fall yeah. and not overwork myself. But I think even going back to that before you were a mom and a wife and then how that shifted now that you're working on the other side of the yeah. educational part yeah. while being a mom and a wife. Yeah, and I, I had um, I had completed my master's degree in, in education before I had kids and before I was married. But I remember in my job in D.C., you know, it would be nothing to – and other people too, just not just me, but like working till, you know, like 6.30 or 7 every night. And I remember thinking like, how am I ever going to do this job when I have to go pick up a child who has to be pick up, picked up at daycare, you know, at – at 5.30 or when I had kind of convinced myself that I just was not going to be able to do the job as well. I'm like, how am I ever going to leave that early? And my one colleague had just had a baby and had come back to work and she's like, you'll leave because you have to. And I just remember that she said it like that. And, Mm -hmm. and I think that was a real learning period for me on how to just, you know, work smarter and work more efficiently. I think looking back, I probably spent Mm -hmm. too much time on things that I too much time maybe trying to make everything completely perfect that not everything has to be like completely perfect Uh like that saying like perfect is the enemy of the good 
like perfect can really cut against like efficiency and oh, wow. just kind of learned how to re kind of a whole new way to like to do my work and to to build that into my schedule and still be there for my family and for my kids and, and trying not to like when they're awake trying not to do too much work at home you know I'm an early riser so I love to get up early I do work in the morning you know, my kids are getting up earlier than they should be so <laughs> They're like, you're doing work. I'm like, I always do work. This is, <laughs> you're like, this is actually when I need to um, do it. And yeah, go back to sleep. But it was, it was just <laughs> a really neat thing for me to see. Like, no, you can, it, you think about it and you can mm -hmm. be creative and you can do this job just as well, you know, under, yeah. under a different schedule. I think of all the parents out there who are doing that and just, it's just constant. You're constantly yeah. going, you're constantly managing something. But then there's also, you know, you see when the children are grown up. Yeah. And not that, like, we want to rush to that, right? Your girls are so little. So it's like you want to enjoy that time. But the ultimate goal is to raise them into being self-sufficient humans, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. To then one day where you can, like, you're going to be able to sit back. Yeah. And watch them flourish. And I think that there is sort of a part of that, too, where you know that there is something on the other side of this. Yeah. It's the... Someone, I don't know if you saw the quote, um, and it's it's similar sort of to like, you know, watering, you know, the grass isn't greener on the other side, you, you just to water yeah. the grass that you have. Mm -hmm. And it's such an interesting quote to me because oftentimes people jump into new situations because they think the grass is greener on the other side, and it's like, okay, but you still are going to have to water that grass. Yeah. If yeah. you think that's different than this, it's not. So it's the tune of a flower, it's like, you know, when you like a flower, you, you pluck it. Yeah. When you love a flower, you water it. Yeah. Or like a plant. Yeah. And that's just life. That's anything mm -hmm. we do in life. And it should be a constant every everyday thing. And, I mean, obviously, everything that you've accomplished, you have done that. The thing that I really, really was impressed by. So you were hired at BC3 in September of 2021 as the Education Foundation position. Mm -hmm. Um, and you were instrumental over the following 30 months in raising nearly 7 million in private contributions towards construction of the Victor K. Phillips Nursing and Allied Health Building on the BC3's main campus and securing a $500,000 federal grant to purchase equipment and technology for the facility. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I will say, because I mean, so much of what we do, including my job today, like major, major teamwork. I mean, you know, and so I actually came into that position when some of that fundraising had already been done. So I know I would ne never want to take credit for that whole number, but um, it was a really fun time to come into the position because mm -hmm. I was only at BC3 for about a, a month before we had the groundbreaking for the Victor K. Phillips Nursing and Allied Health Building. Um, and so I really came in when there was a lot of momentum and it was just such a cool thing to see. It was like yeah. we had um, several donors who gave, you know, very large gifts and then it just created this momentum and all of a sudden, you know, everyone kind of wanted to be a part of it. And um, isn't that exciting? It is. And it's, it's like, it's, we do, you know, the college does such good work and you think about nursing and the shortage that we have and it, it feels good to be able to, you know, talk about something and, and share something with people and then have them get excited and, you know, mm -hmm. want to contribute and want to be a part of it as well. And it was just a beautiful to see that unfold. And just when we would think it was kind of, okay, maybe we got our last gift in, you know, we get another one in. And mm -hmm. so we, it, you know, are incredibly grateful to the many, many people in this community who, who made that happen. Yeah. You know, I, I think back and <laughs> Your frontal lobe isn't fully developed until you're like 27, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I do think back to that. If you could tell your younger self anything, I don't, I don't regret my college experience at all. I think it was like more so the student loan debt. <laughs> yeah. And sort of feeling like I was in a place where I felt like I had to go away. I had to go somewhere yeah. to prove yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And the conversation about going to BC3 had come up. And I felt as if, and, and I think this was a lot of who I was surrounding myself with. And again, at a young age, naive, not really taking the time to think about it. And at that time, I, it was just my mother 
because my father had passed away. Yeah. So it was such a weird time because my mom didn't want me to go far and she's like, I can't pay for college. So you're going to have to, yeah. we're going to have to figure out like through, you know, federal loans and, you know, student loans and scholarships, how you're going to be able to pay for this. Yeah. Cause that's what it's going to end up being. And I do think back now on being back in Butler and hearing about BC3 mm-hmm. and knowing like everything, you know, the affordable tuition, the fact that 75% of BC3 graduates in 2023 were debt free. Mm-hmm. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That is so, that's such a good percentage. And that each year your education foundation awards over $235,000 in scholarships yeah. to students each year. Yeah. That's to me, I'm like, holy moly, like, why are we talking about this more? Like, how often do you, and and this is something I'm just going to throw at you, how often are you guys, and I'm sure you have something, where you go out and talk to, you know, high school students about what programs you have to offer? Because you have a really well-established career programs, transfer programs, certificates, areas of business. Now you have nursing, right? You have so many opportunities for students. So, is that something that you get to do quite often or what? Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, we have a, a great uh, admissions team. And actually, it's very timely because last night we had our fall open house on campus. So it was from five to eight. So we had a ton of families up on campus. It was beautiful weather, which mm-hmm. always helps. Um, but then we also have our admissions teams that go out to high schools, out to college fairs. Um, we have a couple different college within the high school programs, which allows high school students to engage with our college coursework in a, in a few different ways, including Mm -hmm. having some students um, with Butler high school in particular, who actually come to our campus for classes um, for the first part of the morning. So they get to actually see what it's like. Yeah. I think all those things help. And then of course, I mean, you know, you already mentioned Jess Matnock, who's our executive director of communications and marketing, but um, she and her, incredible team are always working on, you know, getting the word out there. And, and I think there just is, you know, something for everyone at BC3. And I think ev- what I, what I love about the job and I was just at, we have six different campuses, two are in Butler County and the four are in other counties. And I was just up at our campus in Brockway Monday and Tuesday of this week, talking to students, probably went into like 15 or 16 different classes over two days. And they just all have different stories you know about why they're there their ages are different their backgrounds are different their expectations for what they want to get out of these you know of this opportunity is different and I just I love that we can meet all those needs and and be all those things to people yeah it's really remarkable I think it it also makes us feel a lot more pride in Butler County yeah to have you right here I mean and there's something there's some sort of I don't know if it's an accreditation or in the state of Pennsylvania, you're, are you like, are we one of the top like community colleges in the state? Yes. So we were ranked the number one community college for 2025 by (laughs) niche.com. I wanted to hit it earlier. Oh, I love that. But yeah, sound effects. Okay. Do you have a laugh track too? Like if I say something funny? Oh. Just... (laughs) I actually, you know what I wanted, you said something earlier and I actually wanted to hit this one. Oh, oh, that's, that's the nice twinkle too. one. That's yeah, nice we have a too. trombone, we have crickets, <laughs> we have like a spooky one. All right. Oh, yeah. I need okay. to come back on just for all of this. Oh, um, yeah. I feel like, <laughs> yeah, we need to bring Jess back and uh, <laughs> yeah. do a little yeah. powwow. Um, I have four mics, so. Yeah. Um, but that's, <laughs> so we, we received that ranking from niche.com, which is an organization that um, does a lot in the space of higher ed. And we have received that ranking 10 times over the last 10 years, not from, from various organizations though. So, um, and that takes into account, you know, um, academics and programs, but also what students and alumni think and the resources that we provide our students. So that's Mm -hmm. why I'm especially proud of that ranking is it, it really looks at the whole picture of what we provide for a student in terms of, um, obviously academics, but also just care and, and support. So, yeah, because I did read about, yeah, six locations. So their main campus, Cranberry, Newcastle, which is Lawrence Crossing, Linden Point, Hermitage, Brockway, which you had mentioned you'd been there. And then Armstrong and Ford City. Yep. Yeah. Um, transfer agreements, which is always a huge thing. Yeah. Because I think a lot of students, 
need to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Maybe they're not sure what their major is going to be and they want to start getting yeah. some of those just elective courses out of the way. Um, and a lot of support too for our students who are transferring, which I think is really important. It's not just, yeah. you know, figure this out on your own, but okay, so your your plan is to go to Slippery Rock or your plan is to go to Robert Morris and someone is working with you and making sure you have what you need and maybe connecting you to some other students who are also doing that. And mm -hmm. so I think that's a, that's a huge part of it as well. You're not on your own as you go through the process. And I love that you offer, and I don't know if this is just community colleges in general, but that you have, like there's that course book that comes out for someone like me. If I want to go take a class, like a, a ukulele class, yeah. mm -hmm. you do those fun sort of courses. Is that pretty typical? I mean, I, I'm sounding a little ignorant right now, but I don't, I'd never looked into community colleges before and what they offer. I just find that to really give, it gives a lot of texture to the school, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I think a lot of our colleague community um, colleges offer some form of lifelong learning, but it, it's, it's pretty neat that, I mean, really like, you know, you could say, I want to offer a class in, in podcasting or in editing podcasts. And I guess two falls ago, I took a class on how to make macarons. Um, oh, that's not an easy thing to do. No, and, and no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've tried. I failed. It, good thing it's, it was a credit, <laughs> non-credit <laughs> class. Um, I also, that, I also thought that up until that time that macaroons, and I didn't know that a macaron was a separate thing. I just thought a macaroon, I don't know. I didn't know that there were two different kind of cookies that sounded the same. So I Okay, wait. So you just threw a, a total wrench in what I understood. So macarons and then macaroon, there's two different ones. Yeah. Like a macaroon is like a, um, a coconut kind of like chunky cookie. So that's what I thought oh. I was going to learn how to make. And then the macarons are those, the egg white ones those that are like the little, little cake. Colored like often. With the stuff in the middle. Yeah. Yes. So I felt very. Yes. <laughs> Starbucks sells those, um, yes. the first ones, and they look like, they almost look like like a seashell kind of, don't yeah. they? Sort of, and they have like the, yeah. those are good. Yeah. They're both good. So, yeah. So wait, which one did you learn how to do? Macarons, which is the, oh, the, the little beautiful little, the more kind of imagine like a pastry shop. You can do flavors kind of and like, they can the be colors like. Colors. Yes. And, um, That's what I tried making. They're very hard They are. Make. They're very fussy when it comes to temperature. And yep dryness in the air and, and things like that. That's so. the thing about baking. Cause I actually, I do bake. I, I am a gluten-free baker Oh okay. only just because a friend is gluten-free mm -hmm. and during COVID had asked me to make cookies and I thought, well, I'm not doing anything else. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to experiment. Yeah. And she said to me, these are the best gluten-free cookies I've ever had in my life. I've had every gluten-free cookie. And then I started selling them I still sell them from time to time, wow. but I okay. haven't baked in a while. Yeah. Um, but it did take me a while to kind of figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, once I got it, I got it. But yeah, it, it came down to, um, even like I started doing this thing where I would freeze the dough balls for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would let the dough sit for a specific amount of time because it's gluten free. Yeah. Um, there's, there are certain things I'm like, every time I have to do, like, if I don't do that, they're not going to be the same. Yeah. And then even the baking sheets, like I would rotate them at a specific time mm -hmm. and flip them because yeah. I don't have a convection oven. I just have like a regular oven. Yeah. So with convection, you get more like overall, it's like, yeah. But in your oven, you notice if you put something in the bottom rack or the top rack, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't just go buy a new oven. Right. So <laughs> I'm not going to just, oh, yeah, let me just go buy another oven. Yeah. Um, Get creative. It is, it is, it's finicky. Baking is finicky, and yeah. those are tough ones to do. No, that's just what I love, because every time I see those books, I'm like, okay, there's there's something in here I want to take. Yeah. I know there's a class I want to take. There's something. There was a voiceover one one time. Okay. I remember I moved back, I moved back in 2022, and that next spring of 2023, there was a a voice class because my mom saw it and I think I was actually doing a show at the time so I couldn't take the class because mm -hmm. it was in the evening but I've looked recently and I think this is a reminder I need to look again and I need to find a class and I need to just sign up for it yeah that's kind of how I roll I'm like committing to it sign up for it it's paid and this is happening on this day yeah that's what I have to do we can do one together we can look we should do yeah, that that would be fun I um 
What would you say is probably the most, and I don't know if this is off the top of my head because this is how I roll sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say is maybe one of the most interesting classes that uh, of those that mm. you've had? I mean, I think the, the macaron, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But I, we know. I don't think I was saying it right. We but. know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. so I'm gonna put something in the in the video, yeah. and if you're listening, you can't see it. So, anyways, um, I don't know. What would you say? Yeah, I don't know if I can even answer that because I don't know <laughs> all of you know. I yeah, um, but there's probably a lot. But but really, anything from okay, you want to have a better mastery of Excel to yeah. um, World War Two history to voiceover to cooking to making a holiday wreath yeah. I mean it really kind of um uh cross-country um skiing like you know yeah um I, d I think that's what is the the nice thing about it is it really just takes the unique talents from our community and gives them an opportunity to come and you know share that and they can change at any given time and yeah um but yeah and, and, and on the credit side of course we have you know five different areas you know we have business we have nursing education liberal arts uh you know you also you have name it stem yeah stem i wrote that down science technology engineering and math yes yeah there's a lot of opportunities and i, I know a lot of people that have gone to bc3 mm -hmm. um some just to get the bachelor's degree to go to college and, and that's a big deal to go to college is a big deal for mm -hmm. a lot of people yep. um you know you offer you also offer even though you don't have on-campus housing mm -hmm. you still offer like you said the supports yeah. and the resources to anyone who's maybe coming from yep. outside of our county that needs to find mm -hmm. somewhere to live and i love that because oftentimes you will hear that someone's like oh well you know this is where we are just check there's a lot of places in the area yeah and for some people, I think for myself, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. But there are some people that just don't maybe never learn to do that or yeah. they're uncomfortable doing that or they, they do want the support yeah. and yeah. deserve the support. So I do love that. Um, the facts about it, I kind of went into that a little bit. I went into the tuition. I'm just taking away whatever barriers exist. I mean, we don't want – because to your point – you could have somebody who is maybe the first person in their family going to college. And this was a really big deal and they've navigated it all themselves. And then they hit a roadblock, which to them just feels insurmountable. Mm -hmm. And then they're gone. Yes. Right. And we, you know, adv advising and tutoring, we have a food pantry on campus for our students. Oh, wow. Um, our pioneer pantry, which is just just incredible, open to students, you know, come in, get food, not just for you, but for your family. We also have hygiene products there. Um, both of the holidays, so Thanksgiving and the um, December holidays, we have um, food boxes where they get like a whole holiday meal, like turkey, all the fixins, you know. And that's it's, remarkable. Yeah, there's a lot of need. There's a lot so of need. So with that, do you need have like volunteers that help sort of put that stuff together? Is there a day that that happens or how is that all sort of yeah. organized? Um, the, so the pantry is all volunteer driven. It's been around for five years now. Okay. Um, and it's, uh, I think the community has kind of fallen in love with it too, which is amazing. When I first got there, I think we raised, you know, annually about 3000 for it. Um, and the, this past year we raised about 30,000. I mean, people know Whoa. about it now yeah. and yeah, all volunteers, um, that work the pantry students know that it's open certain days of the week. And then we just are able to identify the students who could benefit most from the boxes. And so we, we put those together. Sometimes usually the pantry team will put a call out to the entire campus to say, Hey, if anyone wants to volunteer to put the boxes together. So it's a great way for people to get involved and to serve our students. I need to volunteer. Yeah, I do. I've, I've, I did a little bit of volunteering out in Los Angeles for a food bank at, you know, during the holidays. Yeah. And we would go in and we had different days that we would go. So I would always go on the day when we were like prepping. Yeah. So we were just like prepping all these turkeys. Mm -hmm. I just remember like, I've never seen so many turkeys in my life. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was insane. You know, we'd take all this stuff on the inside yeah. out and we had to wash them out and everything. And we'd get them all ready. And what they typically did there was, 
they didn't stuff the turkeys and then they did stuffing separately like in a big pan yeah. is kind of what we did because it just they're like no one's going to be here scooping that yeah. out and doing all of that but I don't know I think it's really rewarding to do something um to help other people I don't ever um I sort of subscribe to the uh because you can, right? Yeah. Like make the time, even yep. if it's like two hours, just because you can. Yeah. Because if you were in that situation and it's everything I've been talking about since this podcast launched, it's none of us are immune to anything. Mm-hmm. We're not immune to disease. We're not immune to addiction. We're not immune to, there's a lot of things. We're just not immune to it. And I think if you walk around in this life and you think, mm-hmm. you know, just about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to start to find after a while that like things aren't really going to come to you. Mm -hmm. You have to give to receive. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of like a thing. And I think that that's a lot about personality as well. And like the way you treat people, the way you talk to people, Um, which is why I know you are where you are, you know, Mm -hmm. that this is all stuff that like you've worked really hard. Obviously, you know, you you read, you read on paper, all these accolades, you know, I read this, um, you you spoke no I already said that one where was the other one that I just saw I wrote something else down here that I wanted to read you said being a present and thoughtful leader during this time of transition steadiness and calmness on campus that was something else that I wrote down Mm -hmm. um and I like that because I think steadiness and calmness together like that's a good yeah I was going to use the word balance (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) I'm not totally anti-balanced. No, I think it's a good reminder because I think sometimes when we feel like we have to like go, 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 Mm -hmm. we lose our calmness. I can get that way sometimes. I can get a little, and I've had people that are like, okay, just, and I'm like, you're right. Just like take a beat. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Um, So there's, it's a good reminder to be like, yeah, be steadfast, but stay calm about it. Like keep your head on Mm -hmm. straight, like do the work. Right. Mm-hmm. Prepare yourself. I mean, oftentimes when I'm getting ready to sit down with someone, like I could sit here and I could write questions down. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I just have to like sit and read about you and talk to you. And then whatever happens, happens. Yeah. Right. I like to read as much as I can about people to get to know who they are. And I think there's so much that you've accomplished so far. I like to ask people if there was 10 years from now or the what's next for you, whether it's personally, whether it's professionally, mm-hmm. or all of that combines. I mean, what's next? Do you have your sights on anything? And maybe let's say personally. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I I think, you know, I see myself at BC3 for a long time. Um, I feel really at home there. I love working in higher education. I've never had a job that has not been in higher education. So I feel very committed to that field. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think just, you know, as long as I'm continuing to learn and continuing to be challenged, and that certainly has been the case this year. And Mm -hmm. I mean that in the best ways possible. Yeah. um, You know, I, I think in this time of transition, I think we're all still working on getting like feeling like the ground is solid below us which is just what happens during change and transition so I you know I look forward to you know continuing to get in a routine and you know I'm I'm excited that we're starting to feel like settled in our our home we moved two years ago and my girls are getting more involved in things so I'm just I'm just looking forward to kind of like settling in if that makes sense you know there's been a lot a lot of change in my life all, all good things, you know, but um, a lot of change over the past five or so years. And so for me, I'm kind of just excited to like to get a get a rhythm that's just going to be our rhythm for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you and I are on that same wavelength. Yeah. Because you moved back a year before I did. Yeah. And what you just said about how you feel like you're finally starting to like settle down and you feel yeah. at home. Like yeah. I feel the same exact way. Yeah. yeah. And it's sort of this. It's a willingness to anyone who might be listening who's maybe going through a big change or about to go through a big change or considering a big yeah. change to just, it's almost like you have to surrender to it, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to literally just, and I've actually had to do that where I will just be like, I will, <laughs> I'll be in here by myself or something. I'm like, someone's going to walk in here. They're going to think I'm crazy. I think half the people here think I am crazy anyways. I know Tammy sometimes does. Like, <laughs> I mean, a good crazy where I'm yeah. just like, hey, 
let's see what happens. Yeah. Like when I told her I was doing this, she's like, you're doing what? And I said, just trust me. Yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to look awesome. Yeah. I'm still working on it, yeah. but she's like, okay, mm-hmm. all right. I trust you. And then yeah. she always laughs, but literally saying out loud, okay, I'm going to trust that everything is going to work yeah. out mm-hmm. because oftentimes, you know, we need, we need the valleys to get to the peaks. Yeah. You sort of need that at times. And it's, maybe it's a reminder of your resiliency or there is something out of it. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you need a moment to pull back. Like yeah. maybe I do need to pull back a little bit and mm-hmm. take a moment. But surrendering when things are happening very quickly or they're overwhelming or new, that's the only advice I can give. Yeah. You're so well-spoken as I I knew that you would be. <laughs> It's not, I, the Pennsylvania State University is not an easy school to get into. So the minute I saw that's where you had your master's, I was like, all oh, right, she's wicked smart. So oh. that's my Boston wicked smart. So, <laughs> um, is there anything else that you would like to say or just leave us with? Um, president, I'm calling you president, not interim. I'm just <laughs> cutting that out. Interim president. <laughs> President, um, educator, um, mentor, mother, wife, friend. Are you sister? Yeah. Daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else would you say? What else can you add to that list? There are other things. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, You're probably in the Wonder Wonder Woman category for sure. Oh, that's... Thank you for saying that. (laughs) I'd you're, say the same about you. So you're in the um, I was gonna say kind category, but that doesn't make any sense. Sometimes I'm like, ah. well, I told you that's that that's the most meaningful thing you could say to me. I mean, truly, you know. So I've thing. I've learned I've had to learn that a lot because I'm one of those people that I'm not good at hiding my emotions, mm-hmm. and if I'm going through something. Or if something just immediately happened. And then let's say someone sees me that I haven't seen in a while. It took me a while to be able to like set that aside. Mm-hmm. And say, oh, hey, it's so nice to see you. Instead of being like, I'm sorry, I can't talk right now. I, yeah. Because those moments matter. Yeah. It matters because what I've learned is that could be the last time I maybe talk to that person. Mm-hmm. I don't mean to be so dramatic about it, but every single moment matters and like Mm -hmm. how we interact with people. And I really try to, sometimes I won't have a great interaction. I'm like, man, like, Mm -hmm. why did I, why was I so like frazzled and I didn't connect with that person. Yeah. It it happened recently. Mm -hmm. I saw someone, we were leaving the theater, uh, the Butler little theater. And I was kind of frazzled because I had to run here and do this. Mm -hmm. And a friend was walking past and she had like waved and I didn't recognize her at first. I was like, I don't know who that is. And then she walked past. She was like, oh, hey. And I was like, oh, hey. And I didn't, you know, and, and they were on a walk. They were going mm-hmm. somewhere and I didn't take the time. And for some reason, I just kept thinking about it. And probably just the other yeah. day, I was like, hey, I just want to say I'm sorry. Like I didn't yeah. take the time to like interact with you. And then I went into this whole, because this is how I am. I'm an over explainer. I went into this whole, you know. When I first moved back, it was really hard because I was afraid that I wasn't going to have friends, that yeah. everybody's established. Mm-hmm. And I'm not married. I don't have kids, you mm-hmm. know? It's just me, my dog, and my cat, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you get to know me, you'll know why it's that way. And mm-hmm. it's, that wasn't the choice. It was, was the path that I ended up on and how it matters. Friendships matter to me. Yeah. And you have welcomed me as a friend, mm-hmm. you know? since I've moved back. So thank you for that. It's oh. like thanking someone, yeah. you know, yeah. but also connecting with people that I didn't know mm-hmm. and feeling like, Oh, this is someone that I feel like I could talk to about yeah. anything. And also now I'm like, Oh, I know her. She's so nice. And Oh, she's so great. And you should totally reach out to her. I'm sure yeah. she'll get back to you, you know, yeah. like or whatever. It's nice to know that you have that. And that's something I think that we definitely connect on, but it is important to, 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 be kind because yeah to your point when we started is you really don't know yeah. what anyone's going through yeah um I you're wonderful you're amazing <laughs> Thank um you. I'm really excited to you know I, I do want to get up there and check out this pantry you're talking about yes um there's so much I've I'm learning doing this podcast yeah, yeah. I'm just like wait what the, all wait, the great things wait, that what? are tucked you know, the not, nooks I don't and mean crannies. tucked in that, you know, 
the people don't know about them, but just like, oh yeah, even since being home, I'm like, wow, I'm just amazed at all the things this community does and yeah. continually learning about them. Yes. You think you know, and then you don't. But kind of, there, mm-hmm. there, there is, and that's what, I think that's the connection that we're trying to do with the podcast and the paper is yeah. like, there is stuff in there, you know, yeah. that you're going to learn something. Yeah. Yeah. And keeping that alive, it's important. You know, I know no one can see it, but like, even like sometimes when I sit in here and I look at the walls, like the side walls I have yeah. basically newspaper wallpaper, but it's all yeah. sports. Yeah. But it's so interesting to look at all of that and think this is just like a teeny tiny snippet of like what's been happening mm-hmm. in our county and think of the 154 years that the Butler Eagle has been around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah. And exciting at the same time. And to think where you will be someday, we're going to be at some award and it's going to be you or something. And I'm going to be <laughs> like, you? I know her when she started out as interim president. Aww. I just think like, I'm the kind of person I like put that stuff out there. I think like, oh yeah, we're yeah. going to be, yeah, you know? Yeah. I remember like, and I remember in third grade, I loved that we had current events on Friday and we had to clip from the Eagle yeah. And write a summary about it. I loved that. I was so excited. I was like all week, like, what am I going to pick? Oh, about that's Eagle. cool. Yeah. I have a very dist- it's probably what, like, I guess that's an early indication of my interest in political science and policy. Because I always liked that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But when you just said about the eagle being around for a while, looking at the wall. You're like, thinking, I remember. I remember that. This is Hope, third grade. Yeah. What yeah. elementary school did you go to? Center Township. Okay. I always wanted to go to Center Township. I felt like all the cool kids went to Center Township. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was the. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I don't know why I. I don't think I was one of those. I know <laughs> I wasn't one. No, I know I wasn't one of those. <laughs> I definitely wasn't one of the cool kids either. But yeah. I went to Conoquinessing and I loved, I loved that school. Yeah. I, I'd get to drive past it every day yeah. to work. And it's just, it's so nostalgic. I yeah. remember, I remember the field where I run the, we won, like we did this like mile relay thing yeah. or mile run and it was so fun. But now where the, like part of the school they've added on, it used to be like our playground that yeah. we play kickball on. And I'm like, we used to play kickball right there. And now there's like a building and like a driveway thing. And I understand that happens, but I just look at it and I was like, I remember the gym when I got, I would get the monkey award every year, making it to the top of the rope. Oh, that was, that was my thing. That was rough for me. It was, I'm a very physically, like when it comes to that kind of stuff, I'm very competitive. Mm. So, and I grew up with brothers. Mm-hmm. So there was sort of a, like, you, you had to, mm-hmm. you had to be good. Yeah. You know, or I don't, I don't know what it was. There was no, or really. It's like, they just made me like, yeah, yeah, yeah do it. You know, and I'd be like, okay, like, <laughs> yeah. I was just kind of wild like that. I was I'm a wild child. not competitive child. at all. We yeah. were doing a Kahoot at the college the other day, and like you know the Kahoot like trivia, and no. my team oh, okay. was like okay. very into it, and I was like, "Y'all are making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I am not. I'm like, this is too. Can everybody please win? I know that's probably yeah. a weird thing for no. a leader to say, but I was like, this is stressing me out. <laughs> this is not. My, I think I'm competitive with myself and like trying to do better, but yeah. I'm like, you're like, blood want, pressure was going up. Yeah, yeah. You're like, I just want everybody to yeah. do good. And I'm like, we're going to beat them. Yeah. I would have been like one of those people. So it's fun, though. It's fun to, like, get to know that about people yeah. and how how can we appreciate that yeah. about each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have friends who were, like, complete opposite. Mm-hmm. But there we find the things that we appreciate about yeah. each other, you know, yeah. and we respect the differences of each yeah. other. And I think that's an important message, too, and just – I'm really excited. I'm really excited, Megan. I mean, there's so much more here that we didn't even really get to talk about. You know, you serve the community as a board member of the Friends of Preston Park Foundation and as a member of the Racial and Ethnic Disparities in the Healthcare Advisory Board for Independence Health System. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're going out there and making a difference. So just thank you for your time today. Yeah. It's always wonderful seeing you out in public. And yeah. I have to come visit you on campus. And you do. Yeah. we got to find a class to take. We do. Hey, if they have a wreath class, let's do that. They do that. They typically have holiday holiday wreath. Because I've been looking for, and I can't find one that yeah. I like. So you got to make one. Okay. I think let's, <laughs> let's look and see if that works for our schedules. Yeah. And let's make wreaths if thank we can and if not we'll find another one yeah and thank you this was my pleasure it was yeah. fun and I love getting yeah. out talking about the college 
When yeah, anyone that wants course. to come up and see us, please do. It's it's the community's college. It's your college too. You know that's what I tell people. So mm-hmm. come up, take a walk. We have a great trail that goes around campus. Yeah. Um, walk around, do your thing. We'll be there. Okay. Thank you so much for your You're time. You're welcome. Yeah. Yay. Thank you for tuning in to Alter Eagle. Join me every Monday for a new episode. And be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Follow us on Instagram at Alter Eagle Podcast. Until next time, stay safe, stay hopeful, stay kind.